I love what God's doing in this series. I see by the power of the Holy Spirit is unpacking the stages so that you understand the stages of purpose. And so it is an unapologetic, long, deep dive that helps pull up a seat so that you recognize purpose in its ingredient form. And so I'm excited to continue on with you. I think it'll be fun. Once again, the goal is for you to see the stages. I think lemonade as a finished product is very similar to your purpose. By the time God finishes the process, all of the ingredients, by the way, that looks really good. <laughs> I almost want to drink it to see, is, is this real? Did our stage, you, you want me to do it? Uh, okay, okay. Uh, this has, n- oh, that's lemonade. It's real, does anybody want some? You, no, I'm just kidding. I grew up in a church where everybody drank communion out the same cup. You know what I'm saying? We, we, we ain't doing that. I'm not drinking after some of y'all. Anyways, uh, I'm just kidding. I'm, I actually would drink after all of you. That's how awful I am. I'm that Southern that I just grab a cup and drink after anybody. And so, uh, but, but I think this, I really do think this is what purpose ends up looking like. Your life could be the life that is a testimony, a billboard of what all the craziness of life looks like in the hand of God. Yes. That he ends up as a great chef, a great creator, stirring all things together for good. I think that's the way that it ends up looking. And the reason why we're doing this series is because while this is the finished product, while it's a refreshing drink and God does desire that your life at some point as you pour out, that it refreshes others. And this becomes like a sample of how good your God is. I think that's where God wants to get all of us. I just, I think most of the journey there doesn't look like the finished product. So the reason why we're doing a deep dive is so that you arri- when you arrive to different seasons of life that don't look like the finished product, you do not stiff arm the process. See, it's a, it's a refreshing drink, but it is a rigorous process. And at the end of the series, I want you to be in a place of understanding that when life hands you lemons, you smile about it because you understand that sour is a part of the story. It's a part of the recipe that everything that you have ever been through, that God ends up using that. So don't run from pain. Don't run from loneliness. Don't run from obscurity. Don't even run from your past. Embrace what God could be doing through it, and you will eventually find that he ends up using it somehow. And so that's why I'm excited to dive in, is because if, if, you, if you deny the process, you delay the purpose. And so I think God, in this season right here, right now, wherever you are in your life, I think it's part of the journey, and I think God wants to radically, radically use it. Last week, we talked about the seed and the soil. Did that minister to you at all? Praise the Lord. God has a seed of potential in your life, but we know that the soil shapes the seed. And so we talked about making sure that you're in a place where you're connected. Everybody say connected. Connected. Protected. Protected. Corrected. Yeah, you have, to, you have to make sure that you're planting your, yourself, your life, the seed of God's potential that we must steward, that you're planting it in the soil. The secret to the seed is, it's the soil. And so today I'm gonna make a, a great assumption that you are in the soil. I'm just gonna assume it. Um, Jesus was, led a group, Jesus was in a group. All of the New Testament, when they wrote letters there wasn't a mass email. Like, the assumption of Apostle Paul is that you were in a room in the synagogue and you got Ephesians, the letter to you, because you were together. So I, like the Bible, am going to assume that you're in a small group. What is a small group? A small group is not a church program. It's the model of Scripture that it is synagogal, church on Sunday, and then we gather to scatter into groups to do life so that we're seen and cared for. There is connection there is protection, and even correction when we need it, amen? Yeah. So I'm going to assume that, <clears throat> and then we're going to take some steps moving forward because here's the reality. Once you get in the soil, get around God's people, and you stay long enough, the seed begins to change. Yeah. Once you're in the soil for a little bit, you begin to realize that something begins to grow and something begins to deepen and something begins to come outside of you 
And what's cool is Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13, references the value of today's subject matter. So if you have your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 13. If you don't, we'll put it on the screen. Matthew chapter 13, verses two through nine. I want you to see something. God is explaining, once again, the seed. And he's explaining the word of God and where it falls, but he gives us insight into seed and how to make sure that we steward it properly. Here's what he says. Then he told them, saying, many things in parables, saying, a farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. So we encourage you. This whole group thing is just the system that gets you around God's people for connection, for protection, and even correction. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched. And I want you to underline this. I really want you to focus in on this part. And they withered because they had no potential. And they withered because God didn't have a plan for them. And they withered because God didn't have good ideas about their future. No, no, no. And they withered <clears throat> because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop. The next stage, after you understand the importance of being in, in a gathering, being in a group, the next stage to everybody's purpose is establishing a root system. Today I want you to help understand the value, write this down, the value of being rooted. The value, there is value in being rooted. Notice the text says that they withered because they had no root. Can I tell you that potential withers if potential does not have roots? And I think what we ought to do this morning at 8.30 says it's us. We ought to tick off the devil. Yeah. Anybody just want to pick a fight? Like, I'm just in that mood. Anybody just want to pick a fight? Can I tell you, we, let, let's expose the enemy of your life, the devil, Satan. Did you know that Satan wants you to live an uprooted life? Yeah. Satan is anti-roots. Yeah. Yeah. Satan is the lead protester against roots. Satan wants to cancel and riot the idea of you having roots. Satan will plant a bitter root in you just so you're not rooted. This is what Satan wants for you. He does not want you to be rooted. So he has launched a smear campaign <laughs> on the idea of being rooted. In fact, if you were to go to the book of Romans, Apostle Paul for, for about 25 verses, really lets you see the calamity that happens in anybody's life and the sin and the entanglement and the addiction, and he lets you see how Satan gets people. Anybody know somebody that has potential but that's not experiencing it? Yeah. Does anybody feel like you still have some stuff in you that's not realized yet? Yeah. Me too. Well, in Romans chapter one, verse 25, Apostle Paul writes to Rome and lets them see this is how Satan does it, and I want you to see something this morning, because roots are God's plan. Satan hates the idea of you ever actually being rooted. What is rooted? It is, it is deeply established. It is firm. It is concrete. It is deep commitments into the thing that will anchor you in your purpose. Romans chapter one, verse 25. Check this out. This is how Satan does it. They exchanged the truth about God for a lie and worshiped and served created things rather than the creator. So when these people missed out on purpose and got rooted in sin and what, what happened? All Satan tries to do, and I want you to get this, is exchange a truth for a lie. Yeah. I've never seen a divorce or a sin life that is rooted in addiction that did not start this simple. All Satan wants to do is exchange a truth about God yes. for a lie. Yes. What, God, what Satan wants to do in your life is simply get you to question. This is his scheme. Satan's scheme is to derail you from God's best, now watch this, by telling you a lie that feels like the truth. 
Ooh, I'm gonna teach this real quick. I want you to get this because I want you to get to potential, but I know Satan's job description, his portfolio, his history, and the way that he gets you. He wants to tell you a lie that pulls up a seat and is so close to truth that it's hard to recognize the difference. And he's always been this way. Can I teach it? Genesis chapter three. This is where we first see Satan exchanging the truth for a lie. I want you to see this. I'm gonna walk down through it. This is Satan, the devil, with, with God's first kids. Watch this. Now, the serpent, the first tool of the enemy that was used by Satan, was more crafty. Everybody say crafty. crafty. Yeah, yeah. So, so Satan doesn't, doesn't pull up to your potential with cocaine in his hand. He pulls up, pulls up with a lie that looks like the cousin of truth. It's crafty. Everybody say slick. Yeah, yeah, he's slick. More crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, he's being used by Satan, so this is the voice of Satan. Did God really say you must not eat from the tree. Did, did God, re yes, God really said that. You ever had somebody ask questions and they don't want answers, they just wanna spread confusion? Yes. Yes. That's a critical questioning spirit, it's from Satan. They don't actually want answers, they just wanna confuse the process so that we don't have to be obedient to what God said would be best for our lives. <laughs> this is the way, I'm just, I'm letting you know the way that Satan works. Now watch this. For God knows, he's talking to Eve, for God knows when you eat from from it, the, 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 the tree that God said don't eat from, your eyes will be opened. Now watch, watch what he sells here. I want you to see the way Satan sells you to eventually uproot you from the garden, uproot you from purpose. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. See, that's, that's, that's truth, truth, lie. It's some truth, what do you mean by truth? Well, he says you will be like God. That's the truth. They were made in the image of God. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, that makes sense because we're made in the image of God. Truth, sounds good. And then it says knowing good. Well, that makes sense to them because if they knew God, they knew good. Yes, yes. But watch what he inserts, and, and knowing evil. He slid this in the back door. God's intent for Adam and Eve is that they would never be intimate and know evil. That they would never pull up a chair to evil. What did Satan do here? He pulled up a lie next to the truth. And this is the same thing that he does with roots. He exchanges what rooted means, what rooted feels like, what rooted does. He exchanges that idea for a lie that feels close to it. In fact, I wanna show it to you. Let me tell you this from the outset and then I wanna unpack this. If Satan can keep us from establishing roots, Satan can keep us from producing fruit. Yeah. If, if Satan can get you obsessed about the fruit and he can, make, he can make roots seem like they're not valuable, then he's got you. If he can lie about being rooted enough to get you believe it, then he can keep you from every fruit. He's not after your fruit. Yeah. Satan is after the root. Yes. Does that make sense? They exchange the truth for a lie. So I wanna walk this out. I'm gonna teach this out. How does this happen in our life? Well, let's go to truth about what God says about being rooted. Jeremiah chapter 17. But blessed is the man who trusts me, God, the woman who sticks with God. That's a good word for root. It sticks, commitment, tied in, bond servant. They're like trees replanted in Eden, that first garden, the purpose. Putting down roots. Everybody say roots putting down roots near the rivers. Now watch the benefit. This is the reality. This is the truth of being rooted. Here's what it's like to be rooted. Never a worry through the hottest of summers. The benefit of being rooted with God is that outside circumstance do not get to worry you anymore. If I know who is in control, I'm not worried about my circumstance as much. Do you see the benefit here? God says this is the truth about being rooted. You don't worry when the interest rates go up because you, you have a God who's above the storm, yes. right? Interesting. Here's another one, never dropping a leaf. Serene and calm through droughts. Everybody else is tripping. Not you. This is the benefit of being rooted, the value of being rooted. Watch this. I love this one. Bearing fresh fruit. Everybody say fresh fruit. Fresh fruit. The benefit's of being rooted, the value, if you, if you can ever discover being rooted, the value is you bear fresh fruit in every season. So what do we see in this text? 
God exposes for us the reality, the benefit, the value of being rooted. The first one that we see here is that roots are a sign of strength. They do not wither. They're strong during droughts. They're not worried during the hottest summer, Scripture says. But, but Satan comes right behind that, and I want to show you how he flips it. Satan says, no, 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 roots aren't a sign of strength. Roots are a sign of being stuck. That's the way that he sells it to us. No, 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 that, that, that's not strength. That's being stuck. That's, you're tied down. You don't want to be tied down. You don't want to be held back. You don't want to live a boring life. That's the way he sells it. Like, like the root system is holding you down and it's mundane and it's boring and you're in a rut and you're settling for less. And Oh, and here's another one. Here's another one Satan says. Um, Close-minded. Yeah. Satan sells root systems as saying, no, no, you don't want to lock into something because that's being closed-minded. Can I help her here for a second? Did you know the goal of open-minded is the same goal as being open-mouthed? Is that eventually you close on something of substance? The goal of being open-minded is to search for truth. Yes. But once you find truth, you close it. Yes. Come on. Yes. That'll preach. Come on. Yes. But what does Satan do? No, no, no. You don't want to put roots down. You don't want those standards. Why? Because then you're stuck. You're tied down. What, what if it's not tied down? What if it's actually being held up? Yes. Standards aren't holding you down. They're holding you up. Yes, yes. But this is what Satan does. Satan just, he, he reorders he puts a whole marketing campaign that says, oh, you don't want that. You don't want a boring life. Some of you need a boring life. <laughs> maybe, you're, maybe you're stressed out and anxious because you are outrunning your root system. This is what Satan does. Amen? What, what else do we see the scripture say in Jeremiah chapter 17, the benefits, the value of root system? We see that it says roots are empowering. It bears much fruit that the way you get to fruit is through the root system. Our world is above the soil. What everybody sees, God's word says, it's below the surface. It's the stuff nobody sees that gives the fruit that everybody wants. It is empowering. What does Satan come along and say, no, 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 no. It's not empowering, it's controlling, it's restrictive. You lose your freedom, you lose fun. No adventure, no progress. Now, when I stand up here and say that, and I talk about the roots being like empowering and then Satan says restrictive. It's, in this moment, it's hard to buy that. Because if you're rooted in God, if you're deeply and firmly committed to God, it seems like, like that, that, that's plain as day. So why does the lie work on many of us? Can I tell you why? It's because the actual feelings of being rooted align with the lie. The brilliance, the intelligence of Satan's attack with this lie is that it is adjacent to how it actually feels to be rooted. The truth is, when we are rooted, we have feelings that feel like being stuck. When you have some standards, when you've rooted yourself in Scripture, sometimes you are kind of constrained because now I can't just go do what well, the scripture says that I need to do this. And so the, the reality is sometimes it does feel restrictive. Sometimes the standard of scripture that kind of keeps you in a place that's holding you to a place, the reality is sometimes it does feel like we are stuck. But that's not reality. It just feels that way. That's why as believers, you need to be aware of feelings, but as believers... We are aware of feelings, but we follow Christ. Yes. Because yes. I know that it may feel when you put root systems like you are stuck, but that is because we are not used to a new size of strength. Before we realize that this is what strong looks like, we think we are stuck. The standards feel stuck. No, 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 that's strength. You saying no to that is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of freedom. That you now have authority over sin. You have authority over promiscuity. You have authority over drunkenness. This is the benefit. This is the value. But all Satan does is say, no, 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 you're stuck. You're boring. You're missing out. It's the same thing he did in the Garden of Eden. He hadn't even changed his plans. He's not that creative. Oh, God has something on the tree of knowledge of good and evil that you're not going to have. He'll open your eyes. 
It's the same thing. He exchanges the truth for a lie. And this morning, I want to flip the script on what you are passionate about. I want to flip the script on how you and I see getting to our full potential. Is anybody there yet? I'm not there yet. I want to get to, so, so let, let, let's, let's flip the script. This, we live in a fruit world, but we worship a God who values the root system. So I want the sermon today. This ain't gonna be a pretty sermon, is it? Let's talk about roots, baby. Let's talk about roots. I get why the world's about fruit. They're shiny, they taste good. You've never tasted a root? Well, some of you ginseng people, eh, it's whatever. <laughs> roots are no fun. They're not pretty. That's the ugliest stage illustration I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like we even put a yellow cylinder. It's still ugly. The, the danger for all of us is that, watch this, watch this, watch this. I want you to catch this in your spirit and your soul. I cannot receive from a place I am not rooted. Catch it. I cannot receive from a place where I'm not rooted. You cannot, I can't get anything out of the word. Are you rooted in it or just reading it? I can't, I can't, you just can't. Because roots, watch this, roots are roadmaps of receiving. <laughs> That's the, the so, so just go biology for a second. Not biology, we'll study of plants. Somebody smart. That, yes. <laughs> Horticulture and botany. Sure, whatever, okay? Yeah, in the South, we call it yard work, pulling weeds, hello. <laughs> How does your flowers, your plants get nutrients? The roots get the nutrients from the soil. So is the case with your life. Watch this. No roots, no fruit. No root system. I'm just, tell, I'm just telling you like it is because I, I want you to understand the value in a world that only takes pictures of fruit. I'm saying it's actually about the underground, deep, firmly connected root system. The way that you get to fruit in life is by taking the time to grab a shovel, get in that soil, and stay there long enough to have deep roots. A great tree you can't just pull out of the ground. You want a, you want a pandemic-proof purpose? Check your root system. How deep and how long is the commitment that you have to the things that God says? No roots, no receiving. And I just wanted to up the honor. I wanted to up the value of being rooted. I wanted you in a world that is obsessed with the finished product. I just wanted you to make sure there has to be seasons in your life where your number one goal is not how high you can go, but how low you can dig. Yes. You wanna go far? Go deep. And by the way, deep is not so intellectually performing that you are so confused by these big words of eschatology and soteriology and exegeting the philosophy so we can get in a room and argue why not winning anybody to Christ. I'm talking about depth and character. Yes. I'm talking about being rooted in Scripture. Yes. What does Scripture say in John 15, 5? It says, if you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Can I, let me just, let me paint the picture. I know it's ugly. I know it's not. Nobody took a picture when I did this. Nobody got excited. And I don't blame you. It's ugly, but it's necessary. Yes. It's tough. It, it takes time, and you ready for this? It takes time. Ugh. You can't fast past this. You can't upgrade this. Can't skip to the front line. No, if you want a great marriage, you have to look at your root system. Well, we did premarital. What about postmarital? 
rooted, long-term, consistent, deep and all kind of sideways and up and down. And it looks like a bad hair day. Let me paint the picture of a rooted person for you. A rooted person is a growing person. Yes, yes. A rooted person is a strong person. A lot, of, a lot of the collapses, wrecks, and calamity that happens in our life oftentimes is when the thing above the ground outpaces the thing that's under the ground. And God is calling each of us as we head towards purpose to, just today, just check, what are you rooted in? Because you receive from the place where you are most rooted. So like if you are overrooted in your industry and interest rates come and your industry falls, all of a sudden you fall. You were never meant to be rooted in your industry. It's just a temporary place that God is using you as a missionary to that industry. Does that make sense? A rooted person is an empowered person. A rooted person is a secure person. A rooted person is a fruitful person. A rooted person is a blessed person. I didn't even say fruit. Why? This generation has been taught to be fruitful, but God said first be faithful. Be faithful. That means dig roots, connective tissue. And don't look at it as settling. Look at it as strength. You're not tied down. You're held up. Amen? Yeah, yeah. Fruit, fruit follows the roots. I want you to see it. I want you to up the value of the way that you've seen being tied into Christ. There's a story of a girl. There's many stories like this. Many of you have stories like this where as you were deeply rooted, deeply committed, fruit comes up. You know, no farmer that plants roots stands beside the root system and goes, come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Oh, you boo, boo, boo. Oh, you boo. No, they understand. Good root system? Uh, good fruit system. We'll be back to pick up the fruit, right? There's, Krista writes in. She says this. I want, I want you to hear every time that she dug roots. Here comes the fruit. Boop, 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 boop. I like that sound. Here we go. When moving to Nashville almost four years ago, to, I knew nobody. I knew I had to get plugged in. Everybody say plugged in. Plug in. I hear roots to a church community. Fast forward to October 19, checking out Zeal for the first time. I had no idea the impact it would have on my life today. I immediately joined the kids team, Roots, and where there someone saw leadership in me and for the first time I felt like I had purpose, fruit in the house of God. I am faithfully serving Root as a nursery coordinator giving parents the opportunity to experience Jesus, fruit, while we care for and pray for the babies, Root. It is so cool to be a part root of building kids ministry that I can't wait to raise my own family in someday, fruit. Her kids will be blessed, fruit, why? Because she helped other kids, root. Do you see it? It's good. Fast forward to group season where I joined a group, root, and not knowing a single person, walked out with my best friend, fruit. Real simple. Now we have the opportunity to travel and tour together while using our creative gifts and to serve one another beyond a Sunday, fruit. This inspired me to lead a group, root, this past semester and help others find that same type of community I found, fruit. (laughs) It would take me hours to describe all God has done in my life, fruit, since the day I walked into these doors, but one thing I will say is I don't know what I would do without community. Because I pushed myself to serve on a team, root, join a small group, root, I can now confidently say I'm walking in the purpose God has for me. God has always had a plan for you for fruit. His job is fruit. JD's job is roots. So today was very, very simple. Can we just self-identify? Where am I receiving from? And where am I deeply, connectively, Deeply committed and rooted in. And I wanted to give you, I'm gonna take five more minutes, I'm done. I wanted to give you, see, you can't decide to produce a bunch of fruit in a day, but watch this, you can decide to put down roots in a day. It's as easy as a decision, like I don't have it all together yet, but this whole rooted thing, the benefits, the value of being rooted, 
I want that for my kids someday. I want that for my business. I want it for my family. I'm not gonna be a fly by night. I'm not gonna be a blow over type purpose. I'm not gonna be a shack. I wanna be everything that God has for me. And I'm realizing after the soil, you stay there for a while. You gotta put down some roots. So I wanna help you. I want you, I saw something in Nehemiah this week and I ran around my living room. I'm talking about like this. Just, just a tickled jog, like a grandfather. Just excited about it, okay? Now, I'll explain it in a minute. I'm out of breath. I don't even know why, okay? I'm gonna give you three places to be rooted and like, like you can like start today. Number one, rooted in God's word. Rooted there. There's a difference between reading and being rooted. Rooted. I'll just throw out some, some challenges real quick. Um, what if you memorize the Apostles' Creed? That is like the fundamental belief system. If you want to start like firming up like your roots in Christianity, great place to start. Like Google it, memorize it. Those are the anchors of our faith. There's no nuance. There's no theologians and Protestantism that ever debate any of those strong things, the anchors to your faith. You should memorize it. You would be deepening your root system. What if you memorize scripture? I got a crazy one. What if you memorize paragraphs or chapters? I'm just trying to deepen your love for God. Listen, this is God's word. Yes, yes. What, what if you didn't just have a Bible plan? Watch this. What if you read long form books of the Bible so you understood context? We have this thing called Tuesday Chapel where I just, we, we do a chapel service for our staff. I'm taking them through whole books of the Bible and we're eating it up. We're loving it. Because if you're rooted in the word, you have fruit that looks like the Bible. You ever read the Bible and be like, why don't I have that? Don't just read it. Let's be rooted. I know I'm rooted in scripture. When scripture, everybody say scripture. When scripture shapes beliefs, I'm glad you watch the news, what shapes your beliefs though. I'm glad you have ideologies. I'm glad you have, but are they shaped by scripture? I know I'm rooted in scripture when it shapes my beliefs and it shapes my behavior. Yes. So like, let's just up the value. Be rooted in it. Be one of those people like, you're the go-to Bible person. That just means like, you don't lean on your own intelligence, you lean on his. Yes. Yes. I wanna show you a scripture. I've actually never taught this and I wish I had like an hour more to teach it, but I wanna take you to scripture in the book of Nehemiah that shows you how we followers of Christ should look at scripture. Notice the posture here in the text, Nehemiah chapter eight, one through six. All the people came together as one in the square before the water gate, just much like a service like today. They told Ezra, the teacher of the law, to bring out the book, bring out the book, the law of Moses, the Bible, which the Lord had commanded of Israel. So on the first day of the seventh month, first day Sunday, Ezra the priest, brought the book, the law before the assembly, which was made up of men and women, all who were able to understand. He read it aloud, watch this, not ready for it, from daybreak till noon. By the way, we're doing that next week. 8.30 to 2.30, bring a lunch, okay, here. <laughs> As he faced the square before the water gate in the presence of the men, Women and others who could understand, and all the people listened attentively to the book. Everybody say the book. Oh. Ezra, the teacher of the law, stood on a high wooden platform built for the occasion so people could see and hear. Beside him on his right says, Okay, Ezra. Well, you're gonna read it? I can't read it. <laughs> you don't want me to try. Bad words could come out. No, we don't do that. Ezra, open the book. Everybody say the book. the book. Watch the response. See, you have a book. You got one on the shelf. We have to remember, most of our world, they're entire people groups that don't even have their own copy yet. Yes. Yeah. All the people could see him because he was standing above them, and he opened it. And he... Didn't teach, didn't sing a song, didn't have a band. All he did was, he opened it. 
the people all stood up. And Ezra praised the Lord, the great God, and all the people lifted their hands and responded. He didn't even preach. He opened the book. And their honor, their love, their adoration, they stood up and responded, amen, amen. In other words, God, do that in me. Amen means do it in me. Then they bowed down and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. This is not just to be read. This is God's word for you to be deeply rooted in it. My encouragement today is get back to it. Get deeply rooted in it. Get a version that you can understand. Get some highlighters again. Do a word study. Find a sentence and just unpack it and go to the original language. Get in it, because if you get in it, it gets in you. Yes, yes. I want that for you. Rooted in scripture in this day and age where everybody has a voice and everybody has a platform and everybody can consult and everybody can tell you what to do. I just think it's probably a better plan to be rooted in what God thinks. Yes, yes. Amen? Number two. Rooted in God's house. It's not a place to attend. It's a people with a mission to belong to. That's the encouragement of scripture. Rooted in God's house. You know God's house has multiple rooms? It's a big, big house with lots and lots of room. A big, big table with lots and lots. Do y'all remember that? That song was fire. Can we do that one again? Well, we can play football. Touchdown. Eh. Yeah, touchdown. There you go. <laughs> you know, Sunday, Sundays are like the front porch. Yeah. Everybody get up here. Let's grab an acoustic. Let's sing. Let's be excited about what, isn't what God's doing incredible and high-fiving. And it's the purpose of Sunday morning. It's a gather so that you can go into the other places that God has. But I'm encouraging you, pass a Sunday morning. You got to get in the living room. Yes. You got to go from rows to circles and get down and, Sit on a couch with somebody and eat popcorn or Doritos and be seen and heard and cared for yes. and deeply known. Yeah. That whole group thing is the model of Christianity. Yes. You can never get all the benefits of the house if you only do front porch. I like the front porch. I think you also need the living room. In fact, I'm gonna put up a QR code right here, right now. Jesus was in a small group. Jesus led a small group. Some of you, today's the day that you decide to put roots in with God's people. All you do is either join a group or maybe you've been around the Lord for a while and you recognize, you know what, I may have my community, but there are people that need community. I'm gonna open my living room. I do it once a month or I'm gonna do it, you know, six times this year or I'm gonna do it 10 weeks in a row or all that's up to you. Our team will come alongside you, but do the QR code. Get your phone out real quick if you don't mind. Just grab your phone. This is how we come alongside you to help you dig some roots, to join a zero group Get around God's people. You gotta be rooted in God's house. You go from the front porch to the living room, and here's, here's a fun one. Here's a fun one some of you may not have experienced yet. You get to go to the kitchen, and you just don't learn to feed yourself, which is good, but you learn that the most fulfilled, watch this, I wish you could catch this, the most fulfilled you may ever be is when you learn how to feed others. Yes, yes. That when you get on the table, have you ever cooked for somebody? Is it not a blast? It's a little messy, and you figured it out, and Hey, you, hey, can grab me olive oil and pasta and, you know, a little bit of this? You have no clue what you're doing, but you watched Emerald a couple of times, just <laughs> flipping stuff, stuff going all over the ceiling, but it's fun. And then you put the plate down and somebody eats it and they're like, ah, and you're like, ah, and they're like, ah, and you're like, ah. <laughs> Serving is fun because you're helping other people taste of the Lord and see that he's good. And so I would just say, that's what a team's like, is like getting in the kitchen and serving people. And you have a gift, and some of that gift will never make sense until you're on a team with other people with gifts, and you're, you're serving people. So I'm gonna put up a QR code. Why? Well, I wanna help you. I wanna help you get deep roots. One of the ways to do that is to join a team. We call it the dream team. We think the dream of God sits on the team of God's people. So I wanna encourage you. Join the team. Join the team. In fact, Easter's coming up. Let me be honest with you. Some of you have said things like this. I'll serve wherever you need me. You, I mean, how many of you guys like that? We're southern. Like, if you need me, let me know. You ready for this? You're needed. Yeah. Yes. You're wanted. Yes. There's a bunch of Easter services we have to add because this whole thing doubles at Easter. Hey, we need you. Yes. You want to be needed? You're needed. Yes. There's a bunch of teams. There's 20-something teams that 
to take place every Sunday so that you can worship one, but you can also get in the kitchen. And I just want it for you. We don't want something from you, I promise. I want it for you. I want you to be in the kitchen and serve something and stand back and they like it. And you're like, yeah, I did it. <laughs> I want that for you, amen? Yeah. Third place to be rooted. Most important, I put it last because this is the most important. Rooted in Christ. Yes, yes. Rooted in Christ. Hungry for Christ. Somebody asked me the other day, like, what is it needed for salvation? I said, you already got it, the need. If you ever graduate from need, you're gonna miss this thing. Yes. What you need for salvation is to recognize the need. When it comes to being rooted in Christ, you have to recognize the need for him and pursue him. And like, if you're not hungry today to dig roots into Christ, maybe self-identify, why is that the case? Because sometimes if your physical needs are met, sometimes we miss out on the reality that we have a need for Jesus. And your family may be doing okay, and maybe your mind's okay, maybe you're less anxious at the beginning of this year. That does not mean you don't need Jesus. So the encouragement today, the encouragement right now is be rooted in him. Learn to worship him and love him and study him. Put him at the first of the day, not the last of the day, amen? Be rooted in Christ. And I'm just gonna tell you, in this stage, if you can commit today, I'm gonna be rooted in scripture, I'm gonna be rooted in God's house, I'm just gonna tell you, with some time, fruit for you, no issue at all. Because you understand the value of the root system. So smile about it. Be encouraged. You're not in control of the fruit. You're just in control of digging roots.